Hey everybody, welcome back to the hangar deck. Hey, as you can see, I'm on the hangar deck. <sighs> I finally made it back. Um, what was supposed to be a up and back trip to Chicago turned out to be a basically a three day trip. Uh, I got back late this afternoon and um, I can't really complain. It wasn't certainly wasn't the airline's fault unless they have a way of uh, controlling the weather and they forgot to do it, which I know they don't. Um, thank you to American Airlines for getting me home safe. Uh, United got me up to Chicago. That's who I usually fly with and United didn't have any flights coming back to Wichita because of the weather. So I wound up flying with American. I uh, didn't get my toolbox, but that's not the end of the world. I don't need it right this minute now anyway. Um, so I digress. That's not the reason for this video. I've been doing, I've already done a little bit of work on the P3 and I wanted to show you something that is fairly, it's a fairly important minute detail and it's something that can easily be missed by a casual builder. It's not a big deal, but if you like to be a stickler, for detail, it's an important detail. This is the wing of the P3, and as you can see, the lead edge is yellow, and it's kind of almost a pale yellow, uh, uh, not a thick yellow, It's you can kind of see through it. It's like it's got a light dusting of paint, which is exactly what it has. And you, as you can see, I have it taped off in the front or on the top, and then I'll just tape the area that I painted on the bottom before I paint the main color on the wing. So let me back up and explain to you why the lead edge is yellow. So I can tell you that at no time during my tenure in a VP squadron was the lead edge painted yellow, but it was yellow. And I'll tell you why. On the lead edge of the wing, all along the wing, along the front of the wing, between the wing tip and engine number one, between number one and number two, between number two and the fuselage, between the fuselage and number three, and between number three and number four, and between number four and the wing tip, there was a plastic sheet that was applied to the leading edge. And it was about as wide as a roll of paper towels. And it was clear. So we would take that sheet, we'd cut it to length, we'd start peeling it, and then we would put it on the lead edge and mash it down and go all the way across the lead edge and then cut it. If it wasn't cut to fit, then cut it where we wanted it to cut off only ever remember doing this once but it was on all of our p3s and the one that i remember doing it to was one of the birds that came back from updating because we had update twos i believe p3c update two and then it went update it went and got updated and came back as an update three so it had been repainted everything was all new and we had to put the lead edge uh, clear plastic on it. So what was the purpose of that clear plastic? Well, <coughs> let me explain further a little bit in that the lead edge of the P3 did not have a de-icing boot on it. So don't think it was a de-icing boot because it wasn't. What the, the way the P3 de-iced its lead edge is it actually used engine gases bled off the engine through the lead edge it had a hollow lead edge and that would keep that lead edge nice and toasty and it would keep the um, keep the the water from freezing on the lead edge now i think that plastic was there to help keep that water from accumulating on that um, on that lead edge, make it slide off better. Um, it also was a great bug attractor. I mean, it, the bugs would smash onto it. You know, that, that's one thing that we don't think about a lot. 
on aircraft. You know, you drive your car, and especially in the spring and summer and, and in the early fall, and you know, you go a hundred miles and you got bugs all over your windshield. We don't think about that happening with aircraft, but it does. Because aircraft, you know, they may at thirty five thousand feet or at twenty thousand feet or maybe even twelve thousand feet, there's probably not a lot of bugs, but when they come in for a landing and depending on the time of the season, they can get hit with a lot of bugs, just like our cars do. But anyway, I digress again. So, how did the lead edge turn yellow? I've already told you that it's a clear plastic sheet that goes on there. The plastic sheet yellowed. And it yellowed in the sun, and it yellowed really quickly. So, what you wound up with was a less than opaque yellow lead edge. Not unlike what Japanese fighters have from World War II, but those were painted on, and British fighters, those were painted on. This was the yellowing of the clear plastic. So that's an important little detail. If you're going to build a P3 and you want it to be altered, you know, ultra right, uh, uh, you know what I mean, ultra correct, <coughs> you're going to want to paint that lead edge, but you don't want to put a lot of paint down. You just want to put a little bit down. Because you kind of want to see that color underneath. Because once you put on your gloss coat, which you will, because this is light gold gray gloss. <coughs> Excuse the cough. It's not COVID, so you're okay. You don't have to sanitize your phone or your device. Um, once you put on that gloss coat, then it's going to be more shiny, which is fine. That's kind of what you want. All right, that's what I have for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and knock off with the video. I've got a little cough going. Um, I've already tested for COVID. It's not COVID, thank goodness. Just uh, run-of-the-mill cold. So, you know. Yay! Anyway, that's it for the hangar deck. And on your way out, please, ladies and gentlemen, watch out for the pop arcs. Watch out for the rotor blades. Beware of the jet intakes and the jet blast. And be careful out there. Stay within the legal limits. See you next time. Bye.